Our summer signings are finally underway, and what better way to start it off than with the captain, Justin Vive. Uh, Viver, we're a couple months into this offseason. What's your summer been like so far? Um, a little hectic. Uh, ran back home uh, for a little while to see the family and the, my nephew and meet my niece, actually, for the first time. She was born during the season, so I hadn't got a chance to get up there yet. So that was, that was really special and cool. Um, and then working a couple camps here and there and was just actually down in Charleston on vacation uh, over my birthday. So that was, that was definitely a fun time. That's awesome. Well, there's so much we could talk about right there. Let, let's start with Denise. What's her name? When was she born during the season? It must've been a bit of a, a wait for you to see her. Yeah. Uh, her name's Savannah. Um, she was born in April. So I, by the time I got back, she was uh, about two months um, old. So it was definitely cool. She's actually the first girl that's been born into our family on this side. So um, I know my mom and uh, her mom and everybody was really, really excited about that. That's awesome. That's really cool. I, you mentioned uh, your birthday, which a happy belated from, uh, I think, all the Cyclones and our fans. You turned 33 last week. Um, what was, was there any special occasion? I know 33 isn't necessarily one of those big milestone numbers, but uh, hopefully you still did something fun to celebrate. Yeah, um, well, we ended up going to the beach all day, so that was uh, that's usually one of my favorite spots down there in Charleston. And then uh, we actually just went out for a nice dinner uh, downtown on King Street, and just kind of take took in the sights of uh, downtown and just enjoyed the the whole weekend itself. Actually, that's awesome. Uh, you know, it's it's funny because we're we're talking in July now, and this is what, I guess now a little over two months since the season ended for you guys. Is it hard to believe that a year ago in July was when your season was ending? You guys were winning a championship, obviously a really weird year to have hockey in July. Yeah, actually funny that you mentioned it when we were on vacation over this last week, all my memories were popping up from like one year ago today or whatever on Snapchat or Instagram or whatever it was. And I said the exact same thing. I was like, man, I cannot believe last year at this point like we were literally celebrating winning and i was like it feels like a year ago we just finished this past season and it's just it was wild um you know it's it also was tough at the same time just because of how late it went and the quick turnaround in the summer there wasn't really you know your normal off season of being able to recover from any you know bumps and bruises of a playoff run and then kind of gear back up it was it was basically about six weeks I had from by the time I got home to by the time I had to kind of turn around and gear back up for this uh, past season. I'm curious then, you know, with all the memories coming back on the timeline of winning that championship, I mean, is there a group text somewhere uh, the day of marking the one year anniversary? I mean, how much are you, you know, keeping in touch with the names that you won that championship with in Fort Wayne? Um, yeah, there definitely, there still is a group chat going and it kind of got flooded uh, that, that week just with all the old memories and videos and stuff like that. And um, We're definitely still in touch. I think anytime a team, whether it's in a weird season like that or a normal year, anytime you win a championship, uh, it's, it's something special and something that, you know, you'll always have with those guys. Um, so whether, you know, people stayed, moved on, retired, whatever it was, I think it's always kind of something special that you'll be able to share with those guys. Well, so I'm sure, as you mentioned, maybe that uh, everything was getting flooded this past week. But um, what about the team here? Because I felt like, I mean, we were you know, obviously both around the team all the time. You know, it was a really good group of guys last season. Um, a lot of characters in that uh, dressing room. So I'm just curious, you know, over the summer, you don't really see guys as much. But uh, how much are you staying in touch with the Cyclones from last year? Um, definitely a decent amount. Um, I would say, again, there, you know, there's old group chats, there's, you know, sending things back and forth, the jokes that they don't go away <laughs> just because you're not in the, the same locker room or the same city um, as that person. There's still all the inside jokes between all the guys and still all the, the laughs that we had over that year. So, um, like you said, it was definitely a close group and a group that got along very well uh, away from hockey, which anytime you have that, I feel like it is, an added bonus. Um, you know, there, it's tough with, you know, 25 guys coming and going and moving parts and everything to kind of find that gel between everybody. Um, and I think that was one thing that we, we definitely had this year and it's carried over into the summer. So I, I kind of want to backpedal then based off what you're just saying there, um, because 
if we go to a year ago where you're winning a championship in July, the caveat to it is you're, I mean, you're still playing hockey in July and you have to ramp up again six weeks later, basically. So discounting that year, uh, this was a more typical off season for you and you've been around the game a long time. Now you're a veteran. I believe this is going to be your 10th season in professional hockey um, at various levels. So are you able to kind of give us some insight into, you know, your routine? We're talking about a lot of the, uh, the, the fun slice of life time off stuff, but I mean, how does your off season typically work in terms of, uh, you know, right now we're talking about the week of uh, about mid July here, July 13th, a couple of days ahead of that. At, at what point do you start ramping up to prepare for next season? Is that a process that has already begun a couple of weeks out? What, what's that timeline like? Yeah. I mean, I think every guy is kind of different. And I think the longer into my career and the older I've gotten, I've kind of found the balance that works for me personally. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I was always just so, so eager as soon as the season ended to, you know, get stronger, get faster. And when you are 20, 21 years old, it's a lot easier to, to recover that quickly. Um, I think now though, it's, um, you know, for at least, three, four weeks after every season, I'm kind of shutting the body down. Uh, I do some light, light workouts, nothing too, too crazy, but just trying to let my body actually recover. Um, you know, especially any year you make playoffs, regardless of how far you go, it's just, you have zero time to recover from the regular season to playoffs. So it definitely takes a toll. Um, but now I'm starting to, I'm back on the ice, um, couple times a week doing stuff out there, a lot of skills stuff, a lot of uh, just movement stuff. And then in the gym about four to five days a week, depending on how the on ice uh, schedule is, but that will usually continue into like August. And then once kind of September hits, it's, it's basically go time because as we know, the, the training camps are so short and it's, you basically have to come in at game shape. Um, and if you don't, you kind of start behind the eight ball there for the first couple of weeks, you're almost playing catch up. So it, it, it is tough to kind of perfect that. But once you find something that works for you, it, it makes it a little easier. Well, and like we said, I mean, you've been around uh, quite a bit here. So you seem like you kind of know that routine really good. Um, again, this is season 10 for you. So is it kind of crazy? We talk about you just celebrating your 33rd birthday. I mean, a decade ago, you were this kid in your early 20s trying to figure out this game that is professional hockey. How does it, I know this is, you know, not the curtain call and you're still trying to play for a while, but I mean, what does it mean to, you know, kind of hit that, that round number and hit double digits as a professional athlete? Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, it's, it goes by quick. That's the biggest thing and kind of takeaway I have from it. Um, you know, literally it seems like it was last season, like when I'm coming out of college, I'm a raw rookie, have no clue what I'm getting involved with or, you know, about to experience. Um, and then, you know, to cap it with that championship last year, and hopefully I can add to that as well over the next couple of years. Um, it, I guess kind of makes you, really value the grind and everything you went through and you go through and all the guys go through. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you, I can look back on and kind of hang my hat on, I guess, and say, you know, it was worth it. Um, all the, the hours in the gyms and the travel and games and every, all that stuff. Um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but at least looking back now, it's, it's something that I can definitely, you know, smile on. One thing that, gets gets brought up a lot and we talk about the 10 years and you know half of them have been in Cincinnati um of course a lot of time in the AHL with Bridgeport as well um I, I think the the nickname though that started to go around at least when I got here is oh there's Justin Vibe that's Mr. Cincinnati uh when it comes to the Cyclones so I, I don't know if it's too early to ask this yet um I know you're spending a lot of your summers in Cincinnati now um it feels like year after year it's more and more time in the Queen City than away from it so like, is this something that when, when it is all said and done and the skates get hung up, like, or is this going to be a second home for you long-term or again, or are we talking a little too early there? Um, I mean, I would already kind of call it my second home um, just with the friends and people I've met away from hockey alone. It's the longest I've basically ever stayed anywhere in my, you know, adolescent to adult life uh, just because when my dad was playing and coaching we were constantly moving um 
you know, different cities, different countries. So um, it's just been, it's been really just, I guess, nice to actually have some roots somewhere and be able to experience a city away from hockey and meet new people and friends. And obviously my girlfriend's here now. So that definitely adds to the home feeling. Um, but yeah, I mean, as for now, and I don't know where my career after hockey will take me, but the plan is definitely to, you know, put down roots here. Okay. So I, I did not prepare this question, um, but I, I figure as we're talking about this, so Mr. Cincinnati, a guy who's been here for a while, you mentioned even friends outside of hockey. If a fan is coming to, to Cincy to see a Cyclones game for the first time and outside of the game, like what's your, what's your go-to spot? What would you tell somebody that's never been here? Like, oh, you, you got to go here. If you're going to go to Cincinnati, you got to go here or you got to try this food. Um, obviously Skyline's up there, but uh, what, what are some of the things that, that come to mind from your end? Yeah, um, Skyline, definitely. I, every year I try to get the guys to go and – there's a lot of skeptics. Uh, it, it takes some convincing, but I haven't gotten too many bad reviews from uh, the new guys every year that do end up trying it. Um, I actually would say out of everything, um, which is, it's weird for, for here, but my girlfriend actually uh, turned me on to this place and it's called The Pony in OTR. Um, it's a small little bar restaurant, but they have the best cheese steak that I have had in a long, long time. That's, that's tough for, uh, for a guy with some Philly roots like me to hear, but as a result, I'm going to have to try it. Have you ever had a Philly cheese steak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where would you, where would you place it in comparison? It's comparable. The only thing is it's not the actual whiz or whatever. That's the only mm -hmm. difference. All right. The Pony and OTR. Well, that'll be that. That'll be dinner at some point this week, um, courtesy of Justin Vive. So, uh, continuing on that Viver, um, as as we're reaching the end here, you know, you are the captain. You will be the captain of the Cyclones again this season. You look around hockey. I, I feel like, and I don't know. Obviously, you've been playing now for a while, as we've talked about. It seems like in the last couple of years, the word culture is getting thrown around. It's like a buzzword now um, where everybody is talking about culture in sports and uh, the culture of a team and the culture of a dressing room. So, you know, I feel like as somebody who wears the C, you, you play a heavy role in that. So I'll ask you with the Cyclones, I mean, what is, what is the culture of that locker room and what is the culture that you try to instill uh, in that dressing room every year? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, it cultures, something like you said, that does get thrown around a lot. And I think at times it gets overdone yeah. and people try to use that as, you know, an excuse or a crutch to why a result happened, whether, you know, it was a bad season, bad loss a firing or whatever it is. Um, and it, it's tough because it's not something you can, you know, you can see or describe to me, it's, uh, you know, it's every, every day, a lot of these guys, you know, they're here for the first year or their second year, or they've gotten traded, they've gotten sent down. So there's not one secret, you know, recipe that's going to work for every single guy that's on this team. You know, some guys, they're, they're aspiring to move up. Some guys are, you know, they're, they're trying to make the team They're It's, it can go a lot of different ways. So as much as there's a standard culture of, you know, hard work and, you know, protecting all your guys and getting along and, you know, experiencing all those things together. I think there's a lot of, you know, branches off of that where you kind of have to take time to instill this culture onto different guys, if that makes sense. Um, you know, cause obviously sometimes guys are here and they're not happy about being here. They wanted to be up or there's other guys that are ecstatic to be here and they made the team. So talking to each of uh, those two guys, you're not going to be able to have the exact same conversation. Um, one might be more encouraging. One might be more, you know, blunt, I guess to say. So I just try to, you know, have a, have a culture or a mentality that, you know, it's a, it's an open door with me. It's an open door with everybody in there. And, you know, I want to get along with everybody and I try to, I guess, take hockey out of things a lot. Um, I think, you know, with the stresses of, you know, producing on the ice and all that stuff, 
it can it can take its toll on you very quickly. Um, so I think just trying to you know like separate hockey from the guy or the guys, get the team out. We you know we went bowling last year, we went golfing last year, we did some other dinners here or there, we did you know Super Bowl party stuff like that. I think that is the culture that I've always tried to drive is becoming friends away from hockey. Because if something brings you together and it's your job, then that, that doesn't necessarily mean everybody is on the same page. Everybody's just there to do their job. So getting away from the rink, getting away from hockey and, you know, really building friendship and kind of a family atmosphere through that, I think carries over to on ice performance. Well, and I also think it leads to guys wanting to come back more and more. Um, and I feel like that's kind of been your case. So uh, last thing I'll ask you here, and I think there's a conversation down the road. We've been doing our two for chirping podcast earlier this year. And I, I know you were at the, the top of the list for a guy that we need to get on and have at length uh, for a great conversation going into this season. But before we get to there, going into this season, let's talk about some milestones. I mean, last year you hit 100 ECHL goals. You hit 500 penalty minutes with the Cyclones. Fans love that stat. Uh, where are you? Because because I, I know you're you're not um, you're not foreign to that knowledge that you are within reach of a couple of benchmarks. So I don't know if that's where the emphasis on your career outside of just winning a championship is, um, but, but are you looking, are you eyeing up some milestones now and, and kind of keeping them in the back of your head as you go into another season? Um, yeah. I mean, I'd be naive to say that you don't see those things or you don't hear people, you know, bringing them up or mentioning them. Um, and they're great. I, at the end of the day, it's, it's cool to have a personal achievement that, you know, like you said, you can look back on and have some milestones with your name on, on certain lists, but at the same time, um, you know, it's, I would rather look back on my legacy here as a captain that was able to deliver another Kelly cup and constantly have successful teams making the playoffs competing for, you know, a Kelly cup. And if those records come by that way, I mean, obviously it's great. It's awesome. But individual achievements don't, I guess, really solidify my mind and how my career will be remembered. So um, I guess that's the way I would, I would put it. Well, the Cyclones, along with you, of course, are going to be in pursuit of that Kelly Cup come October. And on October 29th, they host the Iowa Heartlanders in what will be first face-off here in downtown Cincinnati. But for now, that's going to do it. Justin Vive, our first player signing, the captain of the Cyclones, uh, thanks for taking the time here to chat with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in October. Thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to it.